It's a portrayal of patriarchy being challenged by a girl. There are father and four sons and one daughter, Leila. They are surrounded by misery, living in squalor. Their small house is about to be destroyed. They hardly laugh. As a family, the respect between them is diminished. They mostly argue instead of simply talking. The sons are unemployed, indolent, and incompetent. In this darkness, Leila is glowing. She gives his brother's courage, confidence, hope. She plans, inspires, and forces. Mercedes rejects their father and is authoritative way of life. The movie stirs our emotions. The beauty of Leila's patience and persistence tempt us to follow this map of grief and difficulty. It's indeed a poem written in Shet. Leila is the only chance to rescue. The peak of this story comes when Leila and her brothers plan to buy a shop in a busy mall in Tehran. In fact, this is not a shop yet. It's a toilet where it's supposed to be destroyed and replaced by a few shops. For this toilet, there are countless demands. Leila, who works in this mall, is her boss to obtain one of them, but the major hurdle is money required to pre-purchase. Their own savings aren't enough. It's normal for children to expect their father to have their back when problems come. So they ask their father, Ismail, he has the exact amount of money, but what holds? This old man has ambition for long years to become the patriarch of his clan, and now after the death of the predecessor, this is the best opportunity. The son of the late patriarch Byram asks Ismail for two gold coins, as a gift for his son's wedding to announce Ismail officially as a new patriarch. Now Ismail is positioned between becoming a patriarch and helping his children, and he never hesitates to choose the former. The movie clearly evokes the masterpiece of Coppola the Godfather. It echoes some scenes where an early scene as well stares at the room where Byron's cousin and Kardash Ali's rival are shaking hands. Others come to kiss Kardash Ali's hand. Then we see a close-up of Ismail, he's shocked and disappointed. Finally, Kardash Ali turns back, looks at him contempt, and closes the door. It's a scrupulous adaptation of the last scene in Godfather. Then Kay is left surprised behind the door of Michael's room where his hand is kissed by Ismail. Another scene is the wedding feast, which is more than a simple ceremony. Power is distributed, a patriarch is introduced, rivals exchange looks, gifts are received in the undersized room, the guests are singing and dancing in the big hall while big controversies arise inside a small room undersized. This structure reminds us of Don Corleone's daughter wedding, as we saw in the beginning of The Godfather, since from the outdoor wedding party were intercut with a secret debate in Don Vito's darkened study. Leila's brothers uses the same contrast between joy and laughter outside, and authority and anger inside. But there is a huge difference between Said Rousseau's patriarch and Coppola's godfather. Ismail is a star for attention, motivated by applause and admiration. He loves the position of patriarch to a delirious degree, at any cost. He is obviously deluded by Byron. His ambition is to become a king without clothes. In this sense, his character is counterpointed by Don Corleone, who was paragon of wisdom and who was madly in love with his family and his kids. Filmed in Iran, there is a notable pearl between the picture of a rebellious girl in this movie and the rebellious girl we've seen recently in Iran's streets, who protests have become known to the world as woman life freedom movement. As well as a dictator in his small sized territory, he runs the future of his children by wasting his fortune. As a tyrant, oblivious to the future, consumes the sources of the country for its selfish wishes. Although the movie has been premiered in May 2022 Camp Film Festival and protests speak in four months later in September, their target is the same patriarchy. In the movie, the patriarch rules a home and in street protests, he rules a country. I admire the way Said Rousseau portrays two characters, Leila and Aliris, as two opposite answers to the problem of patriarchy. Leila doesn't fear she is straightforward to criticize her father. She doesn't fall into the trap of respecting parents unconditionally. The passionate climax of the movie is when she slaps her father, not out of revenge. She simply does this to point out to the root of all evil. By contrast, Aliris is respectful, diplomatic, and cautious to the point of cowardice. His decisions always lead to a useless compromise. He is the voice of peace, which is easily used by patriarch to continue to deceive. Except Leila and Aliris, other siblings exist in the movie as insignificant shadows. They are not fully developed. Farrell, the youngest one who shouts at his father in the mall and makes him fall down, is the one who severely defends him when Leila punishes him. It seems suspicious that Farrell is created in the movie only to fill the gaps with rose and untimely shouts. Moreover, some scenes sound vaguely incomplete. For instance, when Esmail ultimately suggests his children to take back the shop, all the family are shocked, gazing at him. It's a detailed reaction shot. Then the camera cuts to four brothers sitting on the steps eating ice cream. We don't know whether they went to the mall owners for shops or not. That family reaction shot cannot be cut this way. The screenplay exaggerates when the price of gold and the rate of dollar begin to rise during Trump's withdrawal from Iran nuclear deal. It took three years for dollar to rise from 3,000 tomans to 30,000 tomans. In the movie, it seems it takes some weeks. I don't want to soften the economic crisis that occasionally occurs in Iran. I want to imply how Said Rousseau plays with facts to create some bother for the characters, and how he becomes close to melodrama by taking this approach. Leila's Brothers has an audacity that absorbs audiences for 2 hours and 30 minutes. It suggests a revision to family 
government is a structure in which father is not the axis of everything. Decisions are made unanimously and the girls are free to disagree. This idea is seductive in a society like Iran, it is considered somewhat a sin. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to help me improve my channel. Like my video and comment on it. I'm curious what you think about my reviews.